Hello everyone, happy to see you here. Welcome back to my channel. Hi, I'm Asimedics. Today we have a very interesting and tricky question from Math Exam. 1 to the power x equal to 4. And a lot of students might be thinking, hey, mister, this is not possible. Because, for example, when we start, like, take nature log from both sides, when we start, for example, apply nature log on the left side, we have 1 to the power x. And on the right side, we have natural log of 4. So we just apply natural log uh, from both sides, and this is a correct way to do this. And according to a uh, log property, this x will come down right here. So as a result, we can write it as x times natural log 1 equal to natural log natural log 4. Right now, let's divide both sides by this natural log 1, and as a result, we have only our x. So x equal to natural log 4 equal to uh, all over natural log 1. Natural log 1, we're going to divide it by this natural log 1. And right here, very tricky moment, because uh, this um, this expression, natural log 4, does exist. So this is like a constant, everyone can solve it according to our calculator. But what about our denominator, natural log 1, is equal to zero. So it change it change everything for us because we can't divide by zero. Right here we will have nature log four divided by zero. And a lot of students might be thinking, okay, mister, we don't have right here real solution. And they are right, we don't have right here a real solution. So no real no real no real solutions. Everything is correct. But what about a complex solution, which is extremely important part right now? I'm going to show you how can we find find a root right here, which is extremely great, I guess. We don't have real solutions or for obvious reasons. We can't divide it by zero. But what about a complex root? How can we find a complex root? Right now, I'm going to show you how can we do this. First of all, we need to know um, the thing which is called, lamb uh, not like Lambert W function, Euler's identity. So this uh, identity looks like that, e to the power i times theta equal to cosine theta, cosine theta, plus i times sine theta. This is our Euler's identity. And this identity looks like that. For example, we can easily check it real quick. Let's let's check it. So, for example, theta equal to zero, we will have the next expression. We will have e to the power i times zero equal to cosine zero, cosine zero, plus i times sine sine zero. So we have real and imaginary part right here. e to the power i times zero equal to equal to one, because this is our e to the power uh, zero, and cosine zero equal to one as well, and this one equal to zero. So as you can see, completely a completely correct expression. This is our Euler's identity. And right now I'm going to show you a really great way how can we find complex roots to our question. So first of all, we need to use a substitution. So our substitution looks like that. So theta equal to 2k pi. This is our substitution, theta equal to 2k pi. And we are talking about integers, so k is a z, we are talking about k equal to 1, 2, 3, and a lot of these integer values. So this is our substitution, theta equal to 2k pi. And right now let's look how um, our expression will look like when we choose this substitution. As a result, what do we have? Our, mm, our uh, Euler's identity looks like that. So we will have e to the power i times 2k pi, equal to cosine 2k pi, 2k pi, and plus i times sine 2k pi. After substitution, we have we have this expression. And right now, this expression is really helpful for us because it helps us a lot to find all possible combinations. So what I mean right now, let's start, for example, let's see what will happen when k equal to uh, 1. For example, for k equal to 1, let's see what will happen. When k equal to 1, what do we have as a result? We will have e to the power i times 2 pi, so we will have e to the power e, we will have e to the power i times 2 pi, i times 2 pi, right here, equal to, we will have cosine, uh, k equal to 1, so we have cosine 2 pi, cosine 2 pi, and plus i sine 2 pi. 2 pi. But cosine 2 pi, these are mm, value that we know, equal to 1. And sine 2 pi, a value, of course, we know this value as well, so this value is equal to 0 for us. So as a result, we have 1 right here, plus 0, equal to 1. So this expression on the left side, equal to 1, when, of course, k is integer. So this expression equal to this expression right here, equal to 1, which is extremely great beginning. Right now, let's see what will happen when k is equal to 2. So for k is equal to 2. As a result, what do we have? e to the power, e to the power, i times not 2 pi but 4 pi, equal to cosine 4 pi, cosine 4 pi, and plus i sine 4 pi. And right now, let's look closely what we have on the right side. Cosine 4 pi equal to 1, and sine 4 pi equal to 0. So as you can see, this expression on the left side is also equal to equal to 1. 1 plus 0 equal to 1. Let's see what will happen when k, we, for example, check when k equal to 3. 
and the last one so let's see what will happen so for k equal to equal to 3 as a result we have e to the power i times 6 pi equal to cosine 6 pi 6 pi and plus i times sine 6 pi 6 pi equal to cosine 6 pi equal to 1 and sine 6 pi is just like a period okay 4 pi 6 pi 8 pi and equal to right here the same thing the period so equal to 0 so as a result we have the same one so this expression right here equal to 1 as well and what I mean right now every time we, we gonna check k equal to for example and go k is equal to 4 k is equal to 5 every time this expression will help will have e to the power i times 8 pi e to the power i times 10 pi every time this expression on the left side will be equal to will be equal to 1 which is extremely important and useful thing for us because it helps us a lot so this expression on the left side in general way we can easily see it like that so this is our general way how can we express it e to the power i times 2k pi every time when k is integer equal to 1 so let's write it let's write this expression that we need so right here let's do this so let's split this part so every time e to the power e to the power i times 2k pi every time this expression equal to 1 we prove it right here when t e when uh, right here we have k yeah we have right here when k is integer so when we're talking about k equal to 1 2 3 so this expression equal to 1 when k is uh, integer but this is extremely important expression for us because this expression will have imaginary unit so it means that we can we're gonna change this one by this expression so don't forget about the question we had in the beginning so in the beginning our question looks like that 1 to the x equal to equal to 4 this is our question from the beginning so right now let's change this one by this expression right here of course we can easily do this because this expression equal to 1 when k is integer so right now let's change this one by this expression so as a result what do we have e to the power i times 2k pi raised to the power x raised to the power x equal to what equal to equal to 4 Okay, equal to equal to four. Right now, let's solve this. Let's solve this equation. We don't have right here one. We have this uh, this thing. So right now, let's try to simplify this a little bit and let's try to uh, let's try to solve this really interesting question. First of all, we can easily multiply our powers. So as a result, we will have e to the power i times two k pi n times x equal to equal to four. How can you find from here of x? Of course, the best way to solve it is to apply natural log from both sides. Let's do this right now. So on the left side, we're going to apply natural log of e to the power i times 2k pi x equal to natural log natural log form and right now this power will come down right here because of this natural log natural log property and not like only natural log but log in general. So we have i times 2k by x and times natural log e equal to nature log equal to nature log 4 this is our expression right now nature log e of course right here equal to 1 so we can easily cancel it and right now let's divide both sides because we need to find our x let's divide both sides by i 2k pi let's divide both sides by this expression so as a result we have i 2k pi we're going to divide it on the left side and on the right side of course i 2k pi we're going to divide on the right side so as a result we can easily cancel it from here and from here and we will have only our x on the on the left side so as a result we have that our x is equal to natural log 4 over i times 2k pi but don't forget about the thing that k is integer we are not talking about k is a real number we're talking about only k is integer so for each of these line you need to write that k is integer right here right here right here okay and the final thing uh, i suggest you like to multiply of a numerator and the numerator by i so right here by i and right here by i as a result right here we will have i square but i square equal to minus one okay i square equal to minus one so as a result we will have negative sign right here at this point so our x is equal to minus i natural log 4 natural log 4 over 2k pi 2k pi and right now uh, okay i'll write it in our answer okay this is our answer to this question so minus i natural log 4 times 2k uh, all over 2k pi this is our complex number uh, this is our complex value in the beginning i proved that we don't have real number roots we have only complex uh, complex root this is also a complex root because, because we have our imaginary imaginary unit so let's write our final answer to this question great question to remember to learn a little bit about lambert w function and of course this is not a like a general method this is like a special case 
space, we can easily like combine all of our knowledge and to, to remember identities and we can combine all of this stuff like to find a real root but this is not like a full solution to this question because we are talking about k is is integer we are talking about k for example one two three we proved it right here when what will happen when k is integer everything is absolutely absolutely great for us but what will happen for example when when k is when k is real numbers when k is real number value what will happen right here and the thing that we don't know what will happen at this point because we know only what will happen when k is integer so when k is integer this is a solution to this question uh, when k is one two three four this is a solution to this question we have a lot of a lot of solutions because we have a lot of combinations of of integers right here we have one two three a lot of these a lot of this solution but what will happen when k is integer well we don't know it and maybe you can write your assumption your solution down into the comment section maybe you know what will happen when k is real number it will be really interesting to to read your thoughts to read your your answer down into the comment section it's also really great to see your respond in the comment section which is which is extremely great what will if you know what will happen when k is real number this is my like solution this is my approach and i know that this is a great solution like for beginners for, for, for those who want to wants to like remember a little bit about complex numbers too who want to like mm, low mass who wants to uh, like uh, spend time with this uh, question so i really hope you enjoy it i really hope you learn something new so thank you for your time wish you all the best in your life also write a thought write a question down into the comment section it will be really interesting to read about it and wish you all the best in your life take care of yourself and have a great day see you in the next videos and of course if it's not hard to you you can easily support me with a like with a dislike and with with the comment it's extremely great to see your your respond and what do you think about this solution if you if you understand uh, my explanation if you don't understand you can easily write your response which is extremely important thing nowadays because i try to make content every day and i really inspire uh, because of your comments about your your notes to these questions and this is not a basic question this is not like a question in, you can see in your school for example this is like a tricky and may, maybe sometimes uh, you can easily say this type of question in your exam and this is my solution so i really hope you enjoy it so wish you all the best in your life take care of yourself have a great day see you in the next videos